going to move to now is an interview uh, with my agent, longtime agent, Mr. Dennis Martin. I want to do a little introduction here on Dennis before I bring him off of mute to go ahead into our, our conversation. Dennis started with me, I think, and I'll have him correct me if I'm wrong, about two to three years ago, maybe close to three years. He lives in Augusta, Georgia. And um, Dennis, like all good agents do, um, dialed right to the program, went on a ride along with me. I remember we rode up in the middle of nowhere in Tennessee, uh, sold some musician guy a policy. That plan's still on the books, by the way, Dennis, but I do remember that. That was a good, good run when we had it. And uh, has been a great agent ever since then. Just like all agents in, in the life insurance business, we all go through ups and downs. Certainly Dennis had it as well. Uh, his best week he's had, at least by my recollection, was a $10,500 final expense production week. Uh, he both sets appointments, he door knocks, and is very good at that. He also does seminars that I constantly talk about their efficacy and, and greatness. So he does a little bit of everything and does it well. And uh, without further ado, Dennis, I'm going to take out the mute and uh, go ahead and let's see if you can hear me. First of all, I, I can hear you. Awesome. We can hear you, too. So, perfect. So, yeah, Dennis, so what I'd like to do, thank you so much for joining me, just kind of give us, um, and again, what we're going to do with this interview is just basically get an overview of Dennis's career, what he does, um, some of his highlights in his career, and, and even challenges if he's willing to discuss that, if, if he would like to, and just kind of get an overall view of how he is successful in this business. So, Dennis, why don't you take us from the beginning? And tell us how you got involved and interested in final expense in the first place. Well, I was uh, in school. Uh, I had just gotten married, and I had a stepdaughter. My wife was working, and I was in school to try to finish a degree in psychology, which I have a background in. And my wife got pregnant, and all of a sudden it, I went from going to finishing school to, oh, crap, I need to make some money because my wife's not going to be able to work, and I need to do something fast. So I did an extensive amount of, of research into insurance and the final expense, and then I came upon an audio of Dave's. Um, you know, he didn't have anything on YouTube or anything like that, and I just remember clicking on it. It said the truth about final expense insurance, and I clicked on it, and it didn't work. And I, and I emailed Dave. I remember and, that, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, I, and, and I was like, you know, I'm trying to listen to this thing, but it's not working. And he emailed me back. It should be working now. Sorry. And so I listened to it, and um, it, and through all the research that I did and the companies that I talked with, what he said, you know, was just the, the truth. You know, it was just the, the no BS. And my my background in psychology is I used to be a therapist and work with troubled teens and their families. So I really appreciate somebody who's just going to tell me how it is. I don't need fluff. I don't need all that kind of stuff. And that's really what parks my interest in working with Dave. And then – uh, really, from there, it was just putting my trust in him and and and, and really just following the process in, in, in which he laid out in front of me. Um, and, you know, I did start out with direct mail leads, and, you know, once they started kept coming in, I really just did pretty much try to do verbatim what Dave did, um, you know, kind of tweak things over, over the – over the years, um, but the the system that he lays out is, you know, it is proven. It is, uh, you know, something that really anybody can follow. And let's see, what else do you want me to go into, Dave? Yeah, well, let me go started ahead. In it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so so now with that introduction, if what I'd like to do, like we talked about prior, my goal is to kind of demonstrate or detail. If we were talking to a relatively new agent, kind of what, you know, what the beginnings were like. So if you can kind of take us back down memory road and go back to your first couple of weeks, um, what did you do? What were your first couple of weeks like when you got started final sure. time? And, and how were you successful right from the get-go? Um, well, the first couple of weeks is like drinking from a fire hydrant. I mean, you have so much information coming in. you got carrier information coming in. You don't know what to keep. You don't know what to throw away. You know, so I just kind of kept everything. Paperwork's kind of piling up. Um, and then I'm just trying to see appointments. And really, the main thing is 
is really just getting your script down um, and be, becoming comfortable with it and having the script to such a way that it, it is conversational in tone. Um, and, and it's really just getting out and, and, and seeing the people. Uh, it, it's extremely, I guess, difficult and nerve-wracking, I guess, at first. Um, right. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep your eye on the ball, and the ball is really just getting out there and see, seeing as many people as possible, because every person that you see, you will increase, um, your skill in, in selling insurance, you know, a, a, a small amount with every single appointment. And then it comes to a point where you kind of get to the point where you've kind of seen everything, you kind of heard everything, and not too much really surprises you anymore. And you also, also over time, I've gotten a lot better at not wasting my time with prospects that, that clearly aren't really prospects, um, right. like just throwing out prices and see if them it'll stick. You know, there, there's definitely, you know, the, the steps that are laid down, they're laid down and in, 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 in then such a way that they do need to be followed in a, in a chronological order because they do lay a baseline and they do flow naturally into a sale. And, um, you know, the, the biggest part with me was just me not really being a, a salesperson um, coming into uh, insurance sales. And, you know, sometimes I'm so direct that, you know, uh, even my wife says it's a hindrance. So a lot of times, um, you know, I'll try, to, I'll try to tap back on, you know, because sometimes you can't be quite as honest as you want to be with some of these people. Like the other day I had an appointment, the guy told me, that uh, it, it was going to cost him $9,000 to get cremated. And he was a very matter-of-fact kind of person. And so the next day, I drove up to the funeral home, which he quoted and got a general price list. And I sat it down in front of him, and I was like, you know, you know, I didn't want to argue with you. I was like, but, you know, we're both straight-up kind of people, but I got this general price list, and here's their prices. And I, I, when I handed them that, him and his wife signed up for two policies. Um, it's going the extra mile on somebody like that that – but I had such a, uh, I had enough of a conversation with him to know that he was serious about getting insurance, and he really didn't know a whole lot about prices and and what he was a, you know what he could qualify for because he had some health issues, uh, and and I did go out of drive an hour out of my way because the funeral home wouldn't send it to me via mail or email, um, but it's getting in front of the people and taking the opportunities that are really just there in front of you. At the beginning, I just kept my head down, see people, see people, see people. But now, for instance, yesterday, I'm riding down the road, and, and I see a big Baptist church, and I have a little recorder in my um, in my car, and I just speak the name of the, of the church or whatever. And if I have time, I'll go back and look it up and maybe look up the pastor and, and maybe send them a note. You know, I, I deal with final expense insurance. Kind of this is what I do. I give educational seminars, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and, and just kind of sending feelers out like that when I have time. Whenever I'm in a, a elderly apartment complex, I just helped one of uh, Dave's agents uh, last week. And uh, it was kind of last minute ride along, but all I was doing was door knocking. And we went into this place, and he asked about seminars. I was like, well, I'll show you exactly how easy it is to book a seminar. I said, you'll either get... Uh, this is wonderful, he, here's when I can do it, or I'm sorry we can't give an audience um, to a private company because we're too heavily funded by the government. So I walked into this girl's office and I said, hey, you know, my name is Dennis Barton, you know, kind of gave her the little thing. Uh, yeah, I do educational seminars, you know, when would be a good time? And she said, well, the last Friday of November we have a residence meeting and every resident will be there. Can you be here at 1030 in the morning? And I said, of course. And she said, can you go ahead and print me up a flyer and send it to me, and I'll go ahead and make sure everybody knows. And the guy who was riding along with me was like, wow, that was really easy. And I was like, that's how that usually goes. I mean, it's extremely right. easy, or it's extremely easy, or it's impossible um, to, to book a seminar. The, you know, the big have, the government-funded ones, um, you know, you just you ask. If you can't get it, then that's fine. Uh, you move on to the, to the ones that will. And, you know, these people, they, they have service coordinators whose their specific job is, is to book enrichment activities for their, for their residents. And, and as, as long as and, – and I've heard other stories of insurance agents going into these places and people not being – the, the service coordinators not being impressed, they're pushing products or whatever. 
And so I always go in there. This is educational. I do not try to sell anybody insurance at the, at the seminar. Um, I go over, you know, and I kind of just tell them, I go over, you know, what's, what's available to them, what they see on TV, what they get in the mail, the difference between those two, what I do specifically different, um, what I recommend them do um, when looking for insurance. And then I tell them at the end, I, you know, I raffle off a $25 gift card. And on that gift card register, I have three boxes. Yes, I like some more information on final expense insurance. Yes, I like a free policy review. Or I'm just here to win the, these free Visa gift cards. And um, and that usually kind of gets a laugh out of them. But uh, but that's that's really it. Um, you know, you you have to you have to emphasize that you're not trying to sell insurance because seniors desperately need an education on what's out there because they're getting so hosed on on the, the stuff that they see on TV or the stuff that they get in the mail um, because they're, they're just they're inundated with it and that's all they see and they all of them have no have horror stories about their friend that died that you know didn't that was in within the two-year waiting period or or I had a friend that had a policy and it kept going up until they couldn't afford it anymore then they had to drop it you know, and, and stuff like that. But it's really just kind of keeping your eyes always out for an opportunity and it's an opportunity that, that you know, um, that you can naturally get into. You know, I'm, I'm not a pushy person at all. Um, it, but really that, just staying busy and trying to be efficient. You know, I, I use a program which I would recommend to anybody who's going to door knock. It's called Road Warrior. And, I mean, it, if managed correctly, it'll hold thousands of leads. Hopefully you'll get to them before you need to hold, it, to hold thousands of leads. But, you know, it has all their information. It's quickly uploadable. You don't have to manually enter in anything. And you can delete people as you see them. And, you know, with one touch of a button, no matter where you are, you can hit the optimize button. And it'll reroute everything, tell you the closest person to you. Um, you know, it, it, it is the most efficient way to door knock um, I've, I've found. And, and I do. I have a lot of success at door knocking. Um, and the thing with, you know, running appointments, you know, you always have no-shows. And, you know, with that app, I'm always the, – the next person to see is really no more than 10 or 15 minutes away usually. Um, if I have a no-show or some time during the day, um, it, it's – I really don't have to fumble a lot or try to figure out what I'm going to do. That program is just right there, and bam, okay, I need to go see this person. Um, and so that's kind of it with the door knocking. Um, trying to think. Let me ask you a question, Dennis. Um, yeah. When you when you got started back um, in the beginning, you mentioned something earlier on. It's like drinking from the fire hose. I remember when you, you said that kind of phrase stuck with me because it's exactly what everybody experiences is not just the actual sale itself for learning final expense, it's learning the carriers, it's learning the script, it's learning the appointment setting script, it's dealing with the, the rejection, the whole ball of wax. My question to you is to kind of give a better perspective for people getting started, you know, what how long do you think it took following the system as it's as it's described and prescribed before you felt like you had a grasp of it, and you felt comfortable about, you know, going through the process. Um, honestly, probably um, between six months to six, six to eight months, maybe a year. Um, that, uh, you know, after that amount, I'd probably say eight to ten months, maybe. It, kind of by that time, I'd almost, I've almost seen everything. I kind of almost knew what to expect on everything. I, I knew what to right. expect of my, uh, knew what to expect of myself. Um, and, and, you know, everything, once you've been in the business that long, things just really just start to become second nature. And, right. and you right. kind of just find, your, find yourself just doing the same thing over and over again. And it's, you know, it, it's repeatable and it's successful and, and you just kind of get in your groove. What do you feel has been the best, how do I say, you know, a lot of agents want to get started, and they're they're concerned that you know, do they have to know everything before they get out in the field? I kind of kind of a loaded question here, but I think you know where I'm going with this. Is what's been the best teacher of of actually this business? 
Well, of course, you, um, you know. I, I'm, well, not, no, I'm not loading it that way. <laughs> well, I know, I, know, I know that. Oh, I know that. But, um, you know, especially starting out in the field, you know, you are you were my greatest resource. Um, you know, when, I, when I'm drinking from the fire hose and I'm sitting there with somebody and they're reeling off these health things and I'm kind of like, okay, I've studied all the applications, but now I'm in a sales situation and my mind has frozen up. And, and it's, and it's mm-hmm. kind of um, uh, paralysis by analysis at the moment. And, you know, I'll call up Dave or I'll shoot him a quick text saying, you know, 67-year-old female, this much sense wound, blah, 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 blah. And instantly he'll shoot back, you know, RNA or Trans America or something like that. And it just kind of repo, you know, it's kind of like, oh, like, you know, I, I knew that in the first place. It was just kind of reiterated by Dave. And it kind of got me out of that um that situation, and you know, you just explain to the client, you know, let me, you know, you know, you're a unique situation. I have a buddy of mine who's been doing this for a lot longer than I have, and he'll have a very quick answer for me. Do you mind if I send him a quick text real quick? Because the most important thing, Mr. Customer, is, is to make sure that what we do get you with, you 100% qualify for, because we don't want problems for you and your family down the line. And of course, they're going to be like, yeah, sure, no problem. And so, you know, you reach out to like that. Um, the, you know, the other thing is really just studying the applications and and just doing it over time. I mean, I can't right. uh, I can't stress enough just the, the the going through the motions. You know, if you do what you fear the most, you will no longer fear it. And it's kind of like with phone calls. I, I can't stand making phone calls, and I still can't stand making phone calls. But you know, I will go out and I will you know take a cup of coffee and I'll kind of get a little setup going and the first couple you know it, it, it's like pulling teeth but by the third or fourth one I, you know just the other day I sat down for like 30 minutes and I booked like eight appointments and it was just bam 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 and I can't stand making phone calls but the thing is is if you're uncomfortable starting out you you know there's going to be some uncomfortable moments there's going to be some sales that you miss because they can clearly tell that you're uncomfortable and that will break your trust and that is part of the learning curve, and you cannot get discouraged because it will start to become more natural. And, you and you know, I guess the most important thing with me is, you know, because I have seen some downs. You know, I, I remember looking at my bank account, and I, and I wish I would have uh, taken a, a little snapshot of it, but I was like negative $200 in all my accounts. And, um, you know, and that's a great motivator, too. <laughs> and... uh but just really getting out and seeing the people and, and understanding that it's okay to mess up. It's okay to, especially during the learning process, don't be too hard on yourself because you missed a sale. Uh, another right. thing, great thing to do is really after every single appointment, uh, either, you know, if you can objectively, you know, go over it in your mind and see where you failed, um, that's great. If you want to go over it with your mentor, um, you know, if you want to talk everyone out with, you know, whoever your mentor is, whether it be me or somebody else, or um, th- then I highly suggest you do that as well. We'll give you constructive criticism. You know, our 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 goal here is is really your success because if if you you know the agents aren't successful, then we're not successful. And you know that that, that that's our main our our main goal is to make our agents successful in any way that you know. Because people learn in different ways. You know, some people are auditory. Some people are, you have to right. see things. Um, and and I just encourage every agent, um, especially starting out in this process, is, is number one, push yourself to do what's uncomfortable. And the more you do that, it will become comfortable. And the second thing is, you know, you never learn anything when you're in your comfort zone, ever. Right. Um, and, and so everybody has to remember that too. Get yourself out of your comfort zone, um, even when it comes when it comes to calling, when it comes to door knocking, when it comes to asking the difficult questions. Because the difficult questions in the interview is what builds trust. Um, and the more you ask them, right. yep. The the more you ask them, the more natural it comes out. You know, in the beginning when you ask them, you know, people read body language very well, and it will come out as, you know, I don't really feel comfortable asking this question. And, and, and that will sense that, and you have to realize that. And then, But the more you do it, the more confidence you have in it, and then the more credibility you have. Because you're asking, when you ask those tough questions to a prospect, 
what you're saying to them is, I, I truly do care about your situation, and I really need to know so I can help you in the best way that I can possible. That's really what it says to them. Um, and you know, <clears throat> with my background, that you know, working with teens and stuff, some that that was my biggest hurdle is, is you know, not being so blunt about um, those tough questions, uh, putting them in more of a tactful way. Because when you're when I was dealing with ju juvenile delinquents, you don't say anything tactful. You 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 sure you're straight to the point, and you know that's it. You know, so I can't, but I can't be in front of a customer, and uh, and you know, I don't know exactly what I'd say, but because I think I'm pinned down. But really, I guess my point is is to stick with the system, um, use all the resources you have possible. If you if you think you're in a funk or if you're doubting yourself, reach out to somebody. Um, because we all need encouragement, we all need some kind of validation in what we're doing and how we're doing it. And you know, sometimes this is a lonely business. And you know, if you need that extra support, then I mean, you have to you have to reach out and get it. Because you know, I'm oh, I'm more than welcome to quote unquote hold somebody's hand when they need my hand when they need their hand held. I think sometimes everybody needs that at some point. Or, um, but. You know, I encourage people to, to really try to do their best to try to figure things out the best way that they, they know how. Um, you know, not, not it's, try to do it on your own but with help with a mentor um, because really us walking you all through every step um, is, is not going to make you a better agent in any increased period of time. Um, the more you get out there, the more you fail, the more you will succeed. And, and it's just a it's a it's a daily it's a it's a it's a daily thing that you just have to get up and, and go through the motions and, and eventually becomes comfortable. So a couple of things I'll mention here, Dennis, that you, you said uh, earlier on. Um, the first thing is that a you definitely want to reach out to us when you've got questions. I I even go so far now to tell people if, if new agents that come aboard, I get pissed if you don't call me and you're wondering and not entirely sure if a case isn't going to fit the client that you're, you're signing up. And I say it like that because I want to make sure everybody understands that that's where our knowledge base comes into the most. You know, we have worked this business for a long time, and through, through the grind and experience of applying this knowledge base, we've developed this understanding of which carriers work better in certain situations. So that goes for any of you guys. If you're ever out there and you need help, you're just not 100% sure it doesn't, doesn't hurt the call or text just to make sure. And the way you phrased it too, Dennis, is perfect. Um, you know, if you're worried about your client not you know, expressing concern that you don't know what you're doing, that's the wrong way to look at it. Yeah, it's how, all in how you phrase it. You know, you can always tell these people, I think I know which direction to go to, but I want to double check and always put their interest first and say the reason I want to double check is to make sure you're going to get the best price and the best value of coverage. And, and nobody will will think less of you. They'll, they'll think more highly of you. If anything, it just builds more goodwill and trust. And, and the last thing, before I ask this last question, Dennis, is that um, <clears throat> the, real, the real way to learn this business, just, just basically if you listen to what Dennis has said, the ups and the downs and all the experiences, is that it's through the application of what is learned in the beginning. You know, we, we have this private training uh, website with all sorts of great, training material. I'm just about to release the sales training and appointment setting live videos to everybody here. Um, it's going to be an awesome add-on training. But ultimately, the real learning experience comes from the act of doing. And, and just like Dennis saying, failing. Yeah, you're going to screw up some sales calls, but nothing teaches better than mistakes. And you learn really this business through the application of, of success and failure and ultimately to mold yourself into a more consistent, more successful final expense agent. So the very last question, Dennis, I'm going to ask you, um, we all ultimately, uh, the reason we're in this business, of course, is to help people and to make money. And like I mentioned earlier on, you know, you had a really fantastic week, maybe, maybe about six months ago, maybe somewhere in that range. You did about $10,500 in business. And you don't have to go into excruciating detail about each sales call, of course, hey, there's actually a YouTube video if you guys are interested. If you, if you want me to send you the link to it, let me know, and I'll do that. But 
tell everybody who's curious, how, how can I write more than $10,000 in a week? If you could kind of hit on, say, like the top three high notes of what it takes to write that kind of volume in a week, uh, that would be great. Yeah, well, you know, I had an appointment at Sutter, and I can't remember the exact numbers, but I remember I did a seminar the Thursday before, um, and, of course, a lot of people didn't want to meet on Friday. Uh, I, I just couldn't book appointments for after the seminar or really that Friday. So, you know, Monday morning I, I started to hit appointments, and they were actually close. Uh, it was the next county over where I gave the seminar. So I was actually going to appointments and had a lot of no shows, but I'd go back. Uh, to where I gave the seminar and knock on doors, um, and that it's just really staying busy. I guess one of the most important things that I do do every night, or, or try to, um, that I think is is the, one of the most important things, is to plan out my next day. Because when I found personally for myself, when I wake up in the morning and I don't have it laid out in front of me what I'm doing for that day, I'm not good at planning my day that in the morning. I've just, you know, once I've finished the day and I kind of got everything settled down and, and I can plan my day for tomorrow about, like, okay, this is where I'm going to be, um, you know, and I might look up some, uh, you know, housing facilities in the general area or if, I, if, I'm, in between, or if I'm in between appointments or no-show, I'll just, and I'll pass one, I'll just stop in. Um, I lost my train of thought. What was it? What was the question again? <laughs> yeah, no problem. So, so let's go back to your your high production week where you did ten thousand. What were the top three things that you think were responsible for that kind of production? Um, just really persistency, getting in front of people, and really just not being discouraged. You know, discouraged. Um, the kind of, just the bottom line in this business is you just try to. You have to see as many people as possible, you know, in, in, in a day as you can without BSing around and trying to plan your, your day around that uh, is so important. And to have idle time is just, you can't have idle time. You, you can always be doing something that will not necessarily at that single moment increase your business, but that will pay off down the line, whether it's, you know, uh, talking to somebody here or talking to somebody there. It's really just staying busy and, 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 and getting in front of people. That's the bottom line in, in, on how to have a great week. And, and, and it, you know, it takes groundwork. It takes planning. Um, you know, I just increased my direct mail leads from 25 to 35 because it got to where I was having a lot of lag time during the week, and that's just – to me, it was just asinine. So the, the next progression to me was just, I just need more leads. So I just stepped up to 35 leads, and, you know, I'm, I'm staying more busy. And, and you'll find as you go along, you know, 25 leads was actually it was, it was a whole lot to keep track of at the beginning. But once you become more efficient at the pro whole process, um, everything just gets so much easier to, to get through. Um, so that now those 25 leads, you know, it leaves me with a – with a lot of time left in the week, so I had to to, to just think, to increase my leads. Um, but the main thing in, in having such a good week is number one, just persistency. You you, you got to stay persistent. You can't take rejection personally. You always have to understand that they're they're rejecting. They're not rejecting you. That people don't know you. Um, and, and really just staying busy and getting in front of people as much as you can. And, and, and being able to do it in a conversational way, not some schmoozy salesperson way or, or, or anything like that, but just having, you know, just a, 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 you know, being able to, to briefly talk to people, and that will eventually lead to, to other sales. Right, absolutely, yeah. That's, that's the thing is, is you got to, uh, true words never been spoken, you got to stay persistent, you got to get in front of the people and, and work the system and just stay, stay, stay sticking to it. And, um, so what I'm going to do at this point, um, if you've got a question for Dennis or if you've got a question for me, anything final expense related, Dennis has agreed to answer questions. The way to ask a question or to just simply raise your hand to be answered to or to ask this question is just to press five star. If you'll go ahead and do that right now, that will raise your hand. I'll see it on my screen here. <clears throat> Again, if you've got a question, 
about anything final expense related. If you've got a question about leads, if you've got a question about um, anything about Dennis, maybe you've got a particular question about how he does things or anything he said that's been interesting that you'd like to ask about, feel free to press five star now, and I'll be happy to uh, answer your request here. So um, I've got one now uh, from uh, last four digits are 4079. I'm taking you off the mute. Hold on one second. Go ahead and state your name and your question, please. Yeah, this is James Bender. Uh, you mentioned that you had an app that showed information about uh, prospects that you would uh, door knock. What was that app again? I didn't get that. It's called Road Warrior. Oh, okay. And it's a, uh -huh. Yeah, and it's a, it's an app on the iPhone, and you can base, and you can go to their their website, RoadWarrior.com, and you know you sign in and it, and you go and you on my direct mail lead, you, you know you can export it into an, into a Excel file, and then on the Road Warrior um, website. You can go ahead and upload that Excel spreadsheet, and then, it, of course, it syncs to your phone. And what it does is it plots out all your leads on a map, and then, you know, with their name, address, um, and it has, you know, all the little dots on a map. And at any given time, you can have a list view, like 1 through 10 or, or 1 through 35 or whatever, or you can hit a button and it will give you a map view, and you can hit an optimize button, which I do a lot um, because uh, sometimes I'll be in an appointment and, uh, you know, the route will be planned out from a different from a different point, maybe my home. But I can always hit optimize, and it will, within 90 seconds, go ahead and plan out the rest, the next person to me, and then the most efficient way to hit the rest of the people. So, you know, I could – if I go to an appointment in the morning and I have a couple of hours between the next appointment, you know, I can just go ahead and know that I'm, go I'm door knocking the most efficient way until that next appointment. And to me, uh, the confidence, so much confidence comes from me when I know in my heart that I know that I'm doing something the most efficient way that I can. Uh, because when I'm spinning my wheels, I feel I get very frustrated. I, uh, I get kind of analysis paralysis, uh, it, but once I figure out a system and I truly know that I'm doing it the most efficient way that that, that it can be done, the confidence in the selling kind of comes with that as well. Because um, everybody hates spinning their wheels, and and there's a lot of feeling of spinning your wheels, especially when you start off in this business, because there is a lot of information that you know that that you're trying to absorb. But uh, yeah, the, the app's called Road Warrior. I highly recommend it. Um, you know, you could, it'll take up to 120 addresses on one single route, and it and it will do unlimited routes. Well, I understand that, but how are, how is it that you're targeting them for final expense? In other words, I mean, if, if you're just going into a random neighborhood, obviously the neighborhood must fit the final expense profiles that we're looking for. Is that correct? Well, how I do it is, is you know, I get 25 direct mail leads per week, and what oh, I do I is, is I, is I take, I take those direct mail leads, and I instantly, when they come out on Thursday, I put them in my Road Warrior app. Okay, I see what you're doing. Uh -huh. And then, you know, so one already, I have, they're already targeted. They're correct. And yep. and then once I have them in my Road Warrior app, once I have actually talked to the person, you know, uh, spoken with them, gotten some kind of feedback, yes, no, call me back, do whatever, I'll make a note on the note card, and I will delete them from my Road Warrior app. So really, towards the end of the week, um, you know, you have blips on the map, and I know that every single one of those people I have not been able to get in touch with, and so they either need to be door knocked, I need to keep calling until I do get an answer, but whenever I see something on my map, I know those are leads that I have not spoken with to at all, and they need to be contacted. And that's to me, that's uh, it, it's just a great way to keep up with things because I do everything. Most of my stuff <clears throat> manually on my on my on my direct mail cards. I make right. notes on them, and then I, I have a filing system. Um, you know, I've tried different digital ways. I just you know 
different ways. Well, when you first people. speak to them and they say yes or no, don't, aren't you making an appointment time, or you just said, well, I'll try to see you this week? When I speak, uh, well, when I speak with them, either they've made, I've either made an appointment with them, or right. you know they're not inter- or they're they're not interested. And sometimes, if they are not interested, or they hang up with me on the phone, or they clearly haven't spoken with me long enough that I feel comfortable that they know what they're talking about, um, then I will leave them on my door knock because I cannot tell you how many. I mean, it's, it's happened to me a half a dozen times in the past month, I have door knocked somebody who hung up on me or told me that they weren't interested, uh, but I knew from the conversation that we had they were blowing me off because they thought I was a telemarketer or they didn't have time, or they, but they didn't have enough time to learn anything about what I was doing. And I probably, I a half dozen times, I've knocked on the, the door just really uh, day before yesterday. Yeah, day before yesterday. And the lady was like, well, I just had a lady call, and I told him, no, I wasn't interested. And then we got to talking, and the policy that she has was basically clean-sheeted, and she's so glad that I actually came by and had a discussion with her, and I wrote her a policy. Um, mm-hmm. The people who uh, – and, and I've told this story before, too. I had one time where I called up a, a lady. I got cussed out and slammed on the phone, and the, the next day I was right by their house. So I went and, and – Basically, I, I door knocked the person who just cussed me out, and they answered the door, and the husband answered the door, and I sold them a policy. So you can't necessarily <laughs> go on, oh, I'm not interested, unless you know that you've had a conversation enough with them um, that they're either, I don't know. Uh, one, one of my favorite, and I guess this is a confrontational part of me, I don't know, me dealing with kids and whatever, but... Whenever I know that somebody's been rude to me or my appointment center and they have just hung up and they don't know anything really about the call, I absolutely love going to knock on their door. Um, mm-hmm. And, and I, you know, I've recorded and, a couple of them. And just, just to see what their reaction is, you know, I've had, uh, you know, some people have been really nasty. And, you know, and I have literally shown up at their house within 20 minutes after them being that nasty to me. Because, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, I didn't send in that car. This is a hoax. You're full of shit, blah, 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 blah. Hey, Mr. Tessa says, yeah, I just talked to you on the phone. I was just here about this card that you'd send in and show it to him. Well, I didn't send Oh, that must be my wife's handwriting. Oh, honey, will you come here real quick? You know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's hey, the way this business goes. Hey, yeah. 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 James, thanks so much for your question. I appreciate it. Let me... Let me kind of build on that because I think that's a good good point you're making there. And, again, five stars if you'd like to ask a question here uh, while I ask Dennis this question. Just press five stars if you'd like to ask me a question or Dennis a question. Yeah, out of those ones that, and this is so important, and I admittedly never learned this until later on in my career, out of the ones who said, I'm not interested, uh, you're full of shit, like you said, or just hung up on the phone, and you could tell they really had no clue what they were talking about. How many of them? How how many of them actually remembered the conversation when you showed up at the door, and and and, and did it have an impact? Um, I think one of them actually remembered the conversation. That was the guy that he lived down. The, he lived about fifteen minutes away from me, and right. he was so rude to me. And I saw where he lived. I, I said, I was like, uh, uh-uh, I'm getting the call right now. I'm going to see him, and and and. and <laughs> That's because he, he remembered the conversation because he was, you know, it was 20 minutes ago. Um, but other than that, not too many people remember the conversation, or if they do, um, they, it's kind of like the lady earlier this week, she said that, you know, she wasn't interested, but she is so happy that I stopped by right. and had an honest, honest discussion with her um, because, you know, when you, once you've been in this business long enough, and you do door knock, especially somebody who says they weren't interested, uh, and 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 they are, you know, a halfway deep. Some people would just have a problem altogether. You just gotta, you just gotta let those people go. But you know, just to show up, knock on their door, show them the card, and just have an honest discussion with them about it. They appreciate it. It lets their guard down. I mean, right. I sat there with this lady, and they, I mean, had a long talk with her, and she was, you know, kind of resistant. But everything that I was saying you kind of see a light bulb kind of go off. And she was like, well, I just bought the policy, and it's in my lockbox. You know, can we actually make an appointment for 
this day at this time, and I'll get it out, and we can, you know, do something else. But, um, yeah, not if they do remember the conversation, um, then they might, you know, they're not mad about it. You know, I, nine times out of ten, um, I've had people just say, you know, I, I told them I was not interested, but I, I truly appreciate you stopping by. A guy yesterday, um, he just clearly wasn't interested because he had this insurance and he was paying this, that, and other for it. And his sister and his daughter's got it, so I can't see it. This, that, and other. And I just and I look at everybody who tells me that. And I say that's fine. I, I totally understand. If there's anything that you get out of this meeting for your own benefit, please get your hands on your policy, read it, and make sure you understand exactly what you have. Make sure that it never expires. It never your you know your your rates never go up, and it can never be canceled at any time. And I said, and be able to lay your eyes on those facts. I said, if you don't understand it, do not call the rep that sold it to you. Call the company itself. And I tell my people, that I, I tell this, I said, you would not believe when I, how many times I'll get 20 to 30 minutes down the road and somebody will call me and be like, Dennis, you're exactly right. This thing expires when I'm 87 years old. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's 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 crazy, and, and that's that's the thing you got to. I want I want the main thing. I, I see someone's got a question. I'll get to in just a second. Hang on, thirty seconds. The main the main reason I asked the question, Dennis, is because these people. You have to understand. We think, especially those like myself, and I'll be the first to admit. You know, calling is is a frustrating, emotionally charged process for me. We and and if you're nervous of it, if you get have reluctance to do it, or you're just kind of like frightened. We give so much more credence and, and emotion to the act than the person who actually picks up the phone. And we forget to think from the perspective of where they are. And what I mean by that is if you picture our prospects, they get calls probably daily, all right? And then you're going to get rejected, quote, unquote. They don't remember. They don't reject you. They reject whatever it is that you're offering or they're just, they just, like you said, don't give enough time to actually go through the process. But, um, the key thing is, if they're getting these calls, and they are daily, multiple times, even if you just waited a couple of days or even a week if you wanted to be sure, I can assure you they will not remember that 20-second conversation if it even got that far. It is well out of their minds. They've totally forgotten. And when you show up, they may make reference to it, but it's, they're not going to punch you in the face very off the property. Because at the end of the day, like Dennis said, and this is so critical, if there's one thing to get from this meeting, it's this. It's, it's that they don't know what they're talking about. They hung up on you before you really established who you are, why you're calling, and why you want an appointment. And and the truth is they solicited Dennis, not the other way around, just like, you know, they send the cards off and it, you know, they didn't have to. You know, we're doing our job to get back with them. And so there is so much business and those supposedly not interested or, or hang-ups that if you, if, you, if you just don't feel like you made an impact, save them till the next week at, at the latest, even a couple of days. Or if you're, if you're bold like this, <laughs> drive right over to see them. It really doesn't make a difference because when they see it, that's really also the power of door knocking too, these leads. When they see the lead, you know, it's undeniable that there was some cause for actually sending it in in the first place, and not until they see it can they honestly tell you no, and, and it sticks. So thanks for that, Dennis. I'm going to take this question here. Again, five-star, ask a question. This one is from uh, 0041. Go ahead and hold on one second. Go ahead and state your name and your question, please. Hi, uh, this is Dennis Lenton from South Hey, Dennis. Uh, I've just gotten a couple of leads in from another source that are looking for, you know, they're younger people. They're looking for term insurance. Uh, okay. Thousand, two hundred thousand, a million. Who would you? Who? What company would you work with? And are we licensed for that? Sure. Yeah. Yes, and yes. So, the easiest solution for you would probably either be Transamerica. They've got a non-med term that's, that's that rights are low face. I want to say the minimum is fifty thousand. If, if that's if anybody does if that's incorrect, let me know. Um, uh, Mutual of Omaha as well. Um, both of those are where I would look. The Term Express is a simplified issue product. 
And then I think the trendsetter express is the simplified edge product for trans, and the term express is for mutual. Those are the two I would look at. Um, those are just decent uh, all-around term insurance carriers or, or products that if that's what they want, you can write them something. Uh, the problem is that we're licensed both with uh, those two companies, but for final expense only. Uh, Transamerica, your license should have the full suite of products. You should have a, you should have access to the term products. Okay. Yeah, you should. Yes, you should. I've called an I've called an asset specific question before um, with a couple of companies, and uh, when when you're all the companies that I've contacted about their other products, they told me that yes, I'm they're available to me, and I'm able to write them. Okay, it's not I'm just a expense. To make sure that we're set up. Yeah, Dennis, just yeah, check check the Transamerica first. That would be the first I'd look at. And then if they don't have that available, call me. We'll look through the other carriers we have, and I'll make a suggestion. Worst case, I'll tell you where you can outsource it. Um, I've got a brokerage that I work with on, on big cases. They would be able to handle something like this. And, um, you know, uh, that way, if for some reason we are locked out of some the carriers, then we've got we've got an ultimate source that we can work with. Okay. All right, All right Dennis. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, five star. Ask a question. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the 15 second countdown here. If you've got any last questions, we'd be more than happy to help you out. Whether it's for myself or for Dennis, we certainly appreciate and enjoy answering and helping in any way we can. So I will go ahead and wrap this bad boy up. First of all, Dennis, I want to thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy day to just kind of give us the rundown about your success and experience in the final expense business. I appreciate your time. Anytime. And um, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. I was just saying, anytime. You know, I appreciate uh, I appreciate your time and all everything you've done to help me. Um, you know, for all the people that are listening. Um, e e I can't tell you how valuable uh, the resources are that Dave, you know, brings to bear on this business, uh, just for little things. I, I just remember one time I was going out of town and uh, for a vacation, and I was just like, "Well, maybe I'll do some mail drops, and uh, I can work a couple days while I'm, you know, while my family's at the beach because I needed the money." And I called up Dave, "Hey, what do you think about me doing some mail drops and working a little bit?" And instantly he was like, "No, I wouldn't do that because they'll start to trickle in." And then you'll get back from your vacation, and you'll still have some trickling in, and then you'll have to go all the way back there to see that. So that's kind of a, you know, so, but, you know, the, it made perfect sense to me. But, you know, talking to David, you know, he, the all the situations that pop in my mind where I can maybe do this or that and other, and I'll run it by Dave, and he's he's got the answer. Um, I don't think there's ever been a time where he, he's been like, well, let me research and and, and get back to you on that. Um, most, I, I really can't think of any. I mean, just the, the knowledge that he brings to bear, um, and that, that hopefully he's instilled in, in, in us as well. It, it's, I, I think it's unparalleled for us to be able to really have the carriers that we have, to place the business that we have that's going to stick on the books, and the resources. Um, you know, if you just follow the system, really, it. it you've heard Dave say it a million times, and I will too. It's it's. Uh, it's a simple business, but it's not easy. But if you follow the steps, it's hard to fail. And 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 this this industry is a lot like golf. It's played between the four inches between your ears. It's all in your head. And if you just get out and do it and follow the system, to me, it, it's 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 hard to fail when you're doing that. It's when you let all the other interruptions in your life uh, start. You either create the doubt or, or to take you away from from keeping your eyes on the on the on the goal. That that's when um, people start to doubt themselves and really just start really falling apart. So really, that's just kind of my ending statement. Right. Well, Dennis, thank you so much for your time. Uh, very good, wise words to say. And again, if I can do anything for you all, I'll be around. Today, so feel free to call me. I've got my 12 o'clock Facebook training that I'm going to be doing on door knocking if you'd like to join me there. Otherwise, I uh, thank you so much for attending, and I hope you all have a rest of the, uh, a good rest of the week and a fantastic weekend. Y'all take care. Thanks a bunch.